I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such Hi, a pleasure Sarah. to speak to you today. Nice to meet you. Um, I mean, I guess Jonathan Glazer's original film, Sexy Beast, absolutely iconic. Um, when you were first approached about the concept, I guess, of revisiting these characters, going to their origin story, what was your first thought? Oh, I loved the film so much that I just thought it was a brilliant idea because I, I wanted to know more. I wanted to know how they met. I wanted to see what their life looked like before Spain, how they ended up in Spain. So what was that journey? So the idea that we were not doing a remake, it was a prequel and it was just taking these really rich, complex characters and, and giving them a backstory was massively exciting. Yeah, yeah, I was the exact same. At first, it's daunting, you know, you, you kind of, when they asked, approached me about doing it, I was like, what, you know? But also, I just loved that performance and I loved that character. And as Sarah was saying, when they said to, when they pitched the idea of like going backwards and finding out how they met and how they fell in love, I, I found it irresistible. And I, I find like transformation one of the most pleasurable parts of acting. So to actually have a source material and, mm. and do that, it was, it was really, really good fun. And I guess having that film to start from, but kind of going backwards, I mean, where do you begin? Because obviously, you know, you're, you're sort of really capturing some of Ray Winston's kind of physicality in your character, mm. for example. Um, but did you start from the outside and go inward or did you think more about the essence of his character and come out? How, how did you begin? Well, it was more um, for, for me personally, I there's this one scene in the film that I called the Cal I call it the calamari scene where the Didi and Gao are having dinner and Gao's ordering calamari and then Jack and H arrive and tell them that Don Logan's coming and for me every element every psychological element of Gal is in that scene <clears throat> I really laser focused on that scene all the physicality and the vocal stuff that was kind of like that's a bit like salt and pepper and that's like the garnishing on top that is for, for me I, I'm sure people work in different ways but uh, for me to understand him, I really have to understand like, the psychological way he, he works and that really gives it. And then the accent, it's just, these are just things you can do, you know, and uh, learn or practice. And then on top of that, it's like Kathy Pryor's costumes, you know, uh, really helps all that um, external stuff. But for me, the, the rhythm of the man is so different for me. Everything, everything about him is different for me and that rhythm... Um, that slower rhythm really, really, actually, to be honest with you, my scenes with Sarah really helped that. There was a romance to them and it really allowed me, there's a scene where, I don't want to give much away, but the gal has to go and pick Dee Dee up from somewhere and they meet and it's the first time they've seen each other in a while and we have to hug, you know, and I just remember really leaning into the, the how slow that moment is and how romantic it is and actually think that's how he moves through the world. So that was, uh, very long-winded answer to say inside out. Face <laughs> <laughs> it inside out. And for you with Dee Dee, I mean, <laughs> she's, you know, such a glamorous person, mm -hmm. um, but she's got something about her and she is in this really masculine world, mm -hmm. but she wants to find something different and something really to connect there with me. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, you know, studied Amanda's performance quite a lot and talking about the glamour, like, you know, the opening shots of her driving down and the wind in her hair and then walking in with all these shopping bags. So from the outset, me and Kathy Pryor were like, she likes glamour. She wants, you know, she she's really good at her job. She makes a lot of money and she spends it on herself. And so costume was, was massive for us. Um, and then, you know, I think in the film, you see how content they are in, in with their life in Spain, um, with their love, um, and uh, so. But we couldn't start there. I couldn't start there, and she's quite still in the film. Um, so I needed to make her a bit more um, messy, and 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 she's wildly driven and ambitious, and you know wants more for her life, and wants more than you know than London, and I think opens Gal's eyes to to the fact that there is more to the world than just the East End. Um, uh, and I think challenges him in yeah. that. And there's there's definitely both Gal and Didi, they come, both of their worlds completely rely on them. Everyone in their worlds needs them, takes from them and um, re relies on them to survive, basically. And when Gal and Didi meet, they don't need anything from each other. Mm -hmm. And they all they can do is, is support each other. And I think that was, there's a line in the film where um, that we both, well, there's, a, there's an immediate chemistry that you can't you can't make up and it's really useful and rare when you get that. So that's a joy. But then when you find out you're, you're intellectually on the same page about what you want to explore in the characters, that's helpful. And there's a film, there's a line in the film where Gal and Didi are on the phone to each other and Gal says, I know you, I know you love me because I feel strong. And that was Sarah and I's... Anchor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. way in about what they, what they give to each other. So yeah. that was... And they're ease with each other. Yeah. And, yeah. 
And I, I think, yeah, sort of building, you know, there is this just such strong chemistry between the two of them, but perhaps it's not just a romantic thing. You know, that speech that Gal gives, talking about, you know, the football pitch that, mm -hmm. you know, they made mm -hmm. nice and then ripped up again, yeah. and sort of understanding what motivates, you know, people, or, or the, the context that these people uh, grow up in mm -hmm. makes them these hardened individuals, yeah. but actually they bring out the softness in each other. So, and all the, the, the show shows all these classes banging up onto each other, you know, like, mm -hmm. and how you can't really escape your class no matter how you try in different ways. And you're saying about Gal with the football pitches, and Dee Dee explains to Gal about her dad and, mm -hmm. and, um, and her position in the industry, and there is zero judgment both sides, for yeah. both sides. And I think that is something that they. Um, Really yeah, connects them, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. And ultimately, what do you hope people will take away from watching the show? I mean, just the '90s like style, the atmosphere. I think the there's music. always appetite for this kind yeah. of like you know the the gangster kind of world. Um, yeah. But like we say, there are these moments which do sort of hit a different chord too. So there's a lot to take from it. Yeah, yeah, I think that people will be really excited by it. It's it's a thrilling, fast, sexy romantic show yeah. and it's quite heightened you know like it's a quite heightened version of the 90s and of east end gangster london which was very deliberate and we wanted and i think that banging 90s soundtrack really uh, adds to that so it's it's definitely good winter viewing like turn off switch off the brain let the bright lights take over <laughs> Do you think the original cast will be watching it? You bring up Ray and see what he thinks. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Is, you know. yeah, I, I hope they're that they're happy with what we what we've done. Definitely. Mm, no doubt they will be. Thank you so much for sharing all that with me. Thanks, I can't yeah. wait for everyone else to see Sexy Beast. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers.